having been here for a very long time and this time around just had too much on my plate uh, if, if you haven't been in, 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 in touch please join command your week every Monday morning at 5.30 on my Facebook I do command your week where the Bible says I love them that love me and those who seek me early shall find me and every Monday morning 5.30 to 6.30 an hour I engage people all across the nations of the world teaching them tools and principles that God has given to me for the past 46 years commanding your week every week so join me every Monday morning at 5.30 but this time around, it was a lot, and I was looking for a way to, um, honestly speaking, to dodge this invitation. Because I've just, I've just started a new series entitled Facing the Future Without Fear. Uh, and one of the reasons is because 2024, uh, it's the biggest election year in history. 49% of the entire population of the world will be voting this year. So it's the year of the struggle and the contention for power. It's the year of restlessness and the year of uncertainty. And there are fears. Uh, and I'm dealing with facing the future without fear. So I said, I got to find a way to get out of this invitation and this your champlain here, he's a very, very serious guy. He's been pulling on me and this time around, I couldn't escape and I'll tell you why. A good friend of mine, Bishop John Francis from the UK, um, called me and he said, I'll be in town uh, officiating a wedding of one of my members on Saturday and I want to be in your church on Sunday morning. Uh, can I come? And I said, absolutely. At that point, I knew that I didn't have any excuse. I got to be here. So I said, okay, so you call out for me, I'm going to Kumasi. So he's preaching for me right now as I'm talking to you uh, to allow me to be with you. And, and I believe that I believe that there is no there is no mistake in God. I believe that everything is by divine providence. Eh? It's by divine providence and I'm here today by providence. Amen? Amen. Yeah, I'm not here by chance, I'm here by providence. And I thank God for every one of you hearing the sound of my voice. Before we pray, I want you to tell two people, the world is waiting for you. Believe it. The world is waiting for you. As small and little as you might think you are, you are a world changer. Amen. You are a world changer. Amen. You are being prepared and developed for great and mighty things that will happen in your lifetime. Tell somebody you are a well changer. You are a world changer. Tell somebody else you are a game changer. You are a game changer. And lastly, tell somebody I am a curse breaker. I am a curse breaker. Don't forget these three words. Don't forget it. As long as you live, always remember that you are a world changer. You are a game changer. You are a case breaker. You have come into the world for such a time like this to break a case that no one in your bloodline and your family has attempted to break before. And you, are that individual that will break that case. You 
are that individual that will make the difference no one in your family has ever made. You are that individual that will bring a change to your nation and your generation that has not yet happened. Your, gen your generation and your world is waiting for you. You can't miss it. You cannot fail. You cannot fail. Tell somebody you cannot fail. You cannot fail. You just cannot fail. Because you are on a mission. You are on a mission. You, you are on a mission. And this mission must be fulfilled. Say yes. Oh, I'm not feeling you at all. It's low energy. Say yes. Say yes. As long as you live, remember these three words. I'm a game changer. A world changer. I'm a curse breaker. That means you cannot be stopped. You cannot be stopped. You cannot be denied. Say, I can't be stopped. I cannot be stopped. Say, I cannot be denied. I cannot be sabotaged. Yes, sir. If you believe it, put your hands together. Whenever, whenever you are down, whenever you are discouraged, whenever you feel sad or depressed, and may I say this, that depression Depression is selfishness. As you grow, you realize that I told you the truth. Depression is a sign of selfishness. The reason why you are depressed is because you are self-centered. You are thinking about yourself. If you take a minute or a moment and stop thinking about you and begin to think and focus on others, and you forget yourself, the depression lives. But as long as you are thinking about you and where you are, you always feel down and depressed. So think of others. Think of others. Somebody said to me the other day, he said, Archbishop, what is the problem of Africa? You all have every resources, rich continent, than any continent of the world. And he said, what is the solution? And I said, the solution is not what so many people think about. And everybody says corruption, corruption in Africa. Our problem is not corruption. What Africa lacks and needs is selfless leadership and visionary leaders and i believe i'm speaking to visionary leaders here i believe i'm speaking to selfless leaders that is what it requires and it will take to turn this continent around and i have a dream i have a dream that in my lifetime i will see an africa and i will see a ghana where our sons and daughters don't have to queue for visas to travel any nation of this world for greener pastures. But our sons and daughters who live in this land and on this continent with an atmosphere conducive for progress and for creativity and productivity. Where our sons and daughters who create businesses and who live here succeed and have the good eat the good of the land where our resources will not be taken by strangers and by others where strangers don't have to come and exploit us but we as citizens can build from the scratch live a good life the good life and have everything we desire and deserve and we will only go outside ghana for a vacation, but we don't have to travel out of this country for greener pastures. I have a dream that there will come a time and a day in my lifetime where our nurses and our doctors and our teachers and our professionals would not go to any embassy queuing for a visa to get a better job with a better raise or salary. But we work in this land here and we'll succeed. 
having everything they need, then they don't have to leave the shores of Ghana to make it. I have a dream, and I look forward to that day in my lifetime that it shall come to pass. If you believe it, put your hands together. Please lift up your hands all over, all across these grounds with your hands lifted up. Be glorified, yeah, be glorified.
you never know why you are here. And until you discover or realize why you are here, you never know where you go in your life. Turn to somebody and say, who are you? You got to find who you are. Because if you don't know who you are, you follow every path in life and you'll be confused. Everybody will tell you what they think you are and what they think you must be or become. But knowing who you are settles every controversy and settles the matter. I pray that at the end of today's gathering and section that you will know who you are. Because when you know who you are, it settles every dispute and contention about life. Today, for a few minutes, I want to talk to you out of one of my books entitled, Don't Fight the Process. Don't Fight the Process. And life is about process. The world is waiting for every one of you seated here under the sound of my voice. And what you will become when you leave this great grounds has everything to do with you understanding the rules of engagement. Life is governed by rules. There is nothing like things just happen. Things don't just happen. I am not standing here by chance. I'm here by providence. Neither are you seated here by chance. You are seated here by providence. There is a reason. There is a reason why you are hearing the sound of my voice on this 25th day of February, 2024. There is a reason. And I want you to appreciate that life is about process. Don't dodge the process. Don't fight the process. If, if a woman gives birth at the labor ward, and as soon as the baby comes out, the baby cries and says, Mama, Mama, I will eat bunu bunu. <laughs> that, is, that, that, is, that is disaster. The mother will scream and call security to come. Because that is not how babies respond when they are born. You can go through process. You don't come out of your mother's womb and immediately ask for bunu bunu. You don't do that. There's a process. And that is what life is all about. I tell people all the time, I said, a shortcut will cut you short. And I've learned in life not to take a shortcut. I've learned to go the extra mile. And I've learned to follow process. Because in life, it's not what you become and what you achieve or you acquire or possess. But it's how you got there. How you got there. God is not going to judge you for being big or being great. But God is going to judge how you got there. How you became big. How you became great. How you became famous. How you became relevant. If you don't go through the process, you can run the race. If you don't follow the rules, you can run the race and after be disqualified because you didn't follow process. You didn't go by the rules of the game. Life is a process. The difference between the first Adam and the last Adam was this. The first Adam was made overnight, was created. The first Adam was not born. The first Adam did not grow. The first Adam was ready made, made overnight. And because the first Adam was not born and didn't go through process. He has no, he didn't have understanding and value of what he had. But the second Adam was born. And the second Adam went through process. And the Bible said, and the child grew in stature and increased in favor and in wisdom with God and with man. The increase in favor with God and with man. The favor was not just about with God, but it was also with man. It's not enough to have favor with God. You must have favor with men in order to reach men. 
and Jesus went through the process and the Bible said that Jesus learned obedience through the many things he suffered. Adam didn't suffer anything, so he did not appreciate what he has. When you come into providence, into greatness, and you come into relevance, and you become big and great without going through process, you did not end it. You got it. And what you get in life without ending is not yours. You lose it eventually. When you compromise to get anything, you eventually lose it. Somebody say, talk to me. Gold is not gold until it goes through fire. Yeah. It comes out of gold. But it has to be subjected to fire. And the value of it is when it has been through or gone through fire. Few things. Number one, write it down. Never forget this. Never forget this. Don't work for money. When you leave this school, don't work for money. Work for experience. Work to gain experience. Don't work for money. Number two, work to develop capacity. Work to develop capacity. Because you see, it is your capacity that determines what you can handle. And if you haven't developed capacity, you can handle anything. So don't work for money. Work for experience. Experience has to do with what you have learned. It has to do with where you're coming from. You've been exercised. You've been groomed. You know something others don't know. Work for experience. And work. Work to develop your value for the marketplace. Because people will not pay you because you're a man or a woman, white or black. They will pay you for the value you bring to the table. What is your value? That is what they'll pay you for. There are so many that will graduate and leave this beautiful campus writing your CV looking for jobs. It is good. But may I suggest to you that as a cash breaker, a game changer, and a world changer, don't live here writing applications for jobs, but live here with a mindset, an attitude, and a mentality to create a job. It is common to write for a job, and it's common to work for salary. But it is uncommon to create businesses. So have in mind that one day you will own your own business, that you will employ people, you will pay salary, you will pay your taxes, and that you will be a boss and a director, and not an employee, but an employer. Have that vision, dream a dream, have it before you. Be daring, audacious. Have that audacity that one day I will direct my own business. One of these days I will own my own business. Talk to two or three people. Tell them, tell them you are my witness. I'm telling you that one of these days I will own my own business. I will direct my own business. I will be an employer and not an employee. I'll be a director and not a manager. Tell two or three people. Tell them. It will come to pass. Dream it. Believe it. Make a quality decision that you will be uncommon. That you will not be common. You won't be like anybody else. That you will be different. Tell yourself, I am, I am different. Yes, you are. I have 43 brothers and sisters. You can look at me any way you want to, but you got some to your family. Just keep it yours to yourself. My father had 37 children and my mother had six. So I have 43 brothers and sisters, but I determined that I will be a curse breaker. That I will be a game changer. 
and that I will be different. It's a decision you must make that I will be a curse breaker. I will break the status quo. I will not be disadvantaged. I will not be held down. I will not be common. I will not be like anyone else. I will be outstanding and I will be a game changer. I will be distinguished. In Exodus 11, 6 and 7, the Bible said, And there will be a great crowd in the whole land of Egypt. But among the children of Israel, not a dog will bark. And then he said this. And that he said that it may be known that the Lord, the Lord, makes a distinction between Israel and Egypt. I pray for everyone hearing the sound of my voice that the Lord will make a distinction between you and others. A distinction between you and your friends, loved ones and siblings that you will be outstanding and different from all others. If you believe it, put your hands together. Say yes. Come on, say yes, somebody. Hear me, things don't just happen. Things don't just happen. I tell people all the time and I said, you know something? Anybody you see on television, on social media, that has become a star in any industry, whether basketball, tennis, football, you name it, whatever, they just didn't emerge. They just didn't appear. They did something behind the scenes that no one saw them when they were preparing. It is your preparation that determines your placement in what the future holds. Before you see somebody emerge and become a champion, they have been behind the scenes like the Tiger Woods and the others. They just did not emerge. They were exercising, they were practicing, they were working at it behind the scenes, in the secret and in the dark. And when they showed up, everybody saw them as a star. And everybody wants to be like them, but that is not what it is. Before they emerge, they prepared. And the Bible said in 2 Chronicles 27 and 6, the Bible said, and Jotham prepared himself before the Lord his God and he became great. It's preparation that determines greatness. If you are not prepared, if you don't go through the process, you can have a desire to be a doctor. But without going through process and learning, being educated and having masters like you have here to teach you, to guide you, to enlighten you, you don't go to theater and say, I'm a doctor because you have a desire to be a doctor. You kill people. You don't have what it takes. You haven't been processed. You can't go to the court of law and say, I have a desire to be a lawyer because I'm articulate. I'm smart, I'm intelligent, and you haven't studied law. You can't represent anybody in the court of law. The judge will hold you contempt of court. So desire is not enough. The fact that you desire something, you wish for something, you want something, does not mean it's going to happen. You got to work at it. You have to go through processes. In order for the things you desire and expect in life to become a reality, you go through process. Somebody say process. process. Come on, talk to me one more time. Give me, give me the word. Say process, process, process. <laughs> give somebody a high five and say go through the process. Go through the process. <laughs> that is what life is all about. Nothing grows overnight. Things that grow overnight don't last. They don't. I have seen a lot over the years in ministry and I've watched the political scenes of the nations of the world and of Africa and I've come to the conclusion that everything that grows overnight and those who grow big overnight and don't go through process do not last. They don't last. Many years ago, Ora Roberts went to his university and the students said to him, Mr. President, how do you 
You know what he said? I won't tell you unless you respond. Do you know what he said? He said, I want to be one that will be remembered that I lasted. Say lasted, lasted, lasted. Kadu laka hasat. Wakatu luka fahan puruwa ikafum. Belikitu kawasata. I lasted. Tell somebody you can last. You can last. There was a young evangelist by the name of Jacko. And in the forties, he was one of the biggest evangelists of all time. And he built a tent bigger than Ora Roberts' tent. And the media blew him up and said, the biggest in town, the greatest, the best evangelist of all time. And his tent was bigger than that of Ora Roberts. Ora did not make a statement. He said nothing. He was silent because silence cannot be quoted. It was just a matter of time. Jaco died at the age of 34 years and his ministry withered and Ora Robert lived and died around 94, 95. About 40 years after Jaco died, Ora Robert was still on the scene. He lasted. Because it wasn't about numbers and it wasn't about being big and being huge it was about fulfilling god's mandate that is all it is fulfilling god's plan fulfilling the will of god understanding discovery the reason why you came and why you are here who are you and why are you here and why are you in this school why are you being educated is it for you to work and make money if that is all that it is then you are disappointment because people can make money without going to invest in. There are so many big people, the Bill Gates, and there's so many others who don't have university degrees, and yet they are billionaires. They've made it. So you are not here to gain education or to have education so you live here, get a good job, make money, marry, have kids, live there good life they call it today the good life flashy cars and all the things we call good life all those things are just byproducts the main reason why you have come and you were born you still alive for such a time like this and hearing the sound of my voice is because god has a purpose and a reason for your being here and until you discover that you will be common like anybody else but if you want to be uncommon, if you want to be a case breaker, a game changer, a world changer, and you want your life to be distinguished from others, you must understand the rules of engagement, that there are rules. And one of those rules is going through the process. Tell somebody, go through it, go through it, go through it. Ah, tell somebody, go through, go through the process. And Jotan became great before the Lord is God because he prepared himself you got to prepare for what the future holds you must know your assignment what you are passionate about what you came to do and why you were born the bible said jesus said for this purpose the son of god was made manifest that he might destroy the works of the enemy. He knew his purpose. At the age of 12, he was found in the synagogue. And the parents said, why have you put fear in all of us? We've been looking all around for you. What's wrong with you, son? You are just 12 years old. And Jesus said, I must be about my father's business. You are here to perform God's business. Sir Winston Churchill said something in the 40s one of the prime ministers of great britain he said there come a time in the life of every human being when destiny taps you on the shoulders to perform a duty for which you were born and what a tragedy it is when that moment 
which could have been your finest moment in life come to find you unprepared. Unprepared. So you need to be prepared. My assignment is to get you prepared because the world is waiting for you. The world is waiting for your kind, your time. The world is waiting for a new type and kind of leadership. Selfless leaders, visionary leaders, leaders who have love for country more than themselves and more than the immediate family. Nelson Mandela was kept in prison for 27 years and he was asked to go home to spend time with his family. And listen to what Nelson Mandela said. He said, you know something? If my freedom, if my freedom, if my living prison will not set free my people from the bondage of apartheid, then I would rather stay in prison and not go home. I'll stay in prison. The day I walk out of this prison, I want the people of South Africa to be free of the rule and power of apartheid. That is the kind of leadership Africa needs today and we cry for. Nelson Mandela said, it is always impossible. It always seems impossible until it is done. Whatever your dream is, is possible. It doesn't matter how difficult it may look like. Somebody was talking to me and said, Papa, what is wrong with Africa? And he was very depressed and he was very down. And he said, do you think things will ever get better? And I said, yes, things will get better. It will. He said, how? I said, we have to keep dreaming. We have to keep hope alive. We must have faith in God that one day in our lifetime, in our lifetime, we will see and find the kind of leadership that is necessary to move this continent and the nations of Africa. We must keep dreaming. We must hold fast to our dreams and not give up our aspiration. I came to speak to an individual who is determined to be a curse breaker. An individual who is determined to be a game changer. An individual who is determined and have the audacity to be distinguished from others and to be uncommon. But there is a price to pay if you want to walk that path. Nothing comes without pain. Hear me? No pain, no gain. You got to go through it. Give somebody a high five and say, you can go through it. You can go through it. Tell somebody, you can do this. You can do this. In order to do it, in order to be a game changer and a curse breaker, you cannot dwell on the past. So many things has happened to all of us. When my mother took seed of me, she bled for four months. And Dr. Sakwa Mante at Kolibu said, Florence, you are anemic. You lie in cold blood. You are weak. You can't carry this pregnancy. So they performed a DNC and took the baby out. Months after her stomach kept growing, they went back to theater and they found out that we were twins. And the first procedure took my twin out and left me there by providence. I wasn't spared because I was better than my twin. I was spared because God had a plan for me. I was spared because I had to stand here and speak to you on the 25th of February in the year of our Lord 2024. That is the only reason why I was spared. Come on somebody, put your hands together, say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Tell two people, I am not a mistake. I am not a mistake. I am not a mistake. I am, I am not a mistake. Don't look down on me. Don't look at me that way. And be careful. Be careful how you treat me. And be careful what you say about me. Because you don't know who you are sitting next to. The Bible said that eyes have not seen. Neither has ear heard. Nor entered the hearts of men. What God has prepared for those who love him. Is there anybody here who love the Lord? Come on somebody. Put your hands together if you love the Lord. Put your hands together if you love the Lord. Say yes, say yes, say yes. 
Tell somebody, you don't know me. You don't know me. Tell somebody, you don't know who you are sitting next to. You don't know who you are sitting next to. You know, a story was told about Mendiba, Nancy Mandela. One day he said to his security, I want to go out for lunch. And they said, where? We have to go and check and investigate the place first. And Nancy Mandela said, don't worry, let's just go. So they went to a restaurant. When they sat down, ordering his food, he saw this man sitting opposite him, a Caucasian. And he said to his security, invite that man to join my table. And he said, Mr. President, you can't do that. And he said, I'm ordering you. Bring him. So the man came and sat at Nelson Mandela's table. He was very nervous. He did not tell a word. President Mandela said nothing. After eating, he parted with the man. Then on their way home, he said to his security, why do you think the man was nervous? And they said, it's because you are Mr. President, a very powerful person. And he said, no. He said, when I was in prison, he was one of the men whenever I was beaten and I asked for water, he will pee on my head and tell me to drink it. So when he saw me, knowing what I had become, he was nervous. He was afraid, thinking that I would dwell on my past and I remember the evil he did to pay him back. He didn't do that. Nelson Mandela said, as I stand, right at the door to my freedom he said i realize that if i don't leave behind me my bitterness my unforgiveness and the pain and the sufferings that was that was imposed on me by apartheid if i don't leave it all behind me i will walk through this door of freedom and still be in prison there are so many hearing the sound of my voice you are still living in your past. You are living with a dream. Living in the pain and the suffering, the abuse and the things you went through when you were growing up. You are here in the university. But you can't let go. Your past has enslaved you. You are a prisoner of yesterday. I have many sorrows. And I have many memories of what was done to me in my upbringing. The other day I said to one of my daughters, I said, I need to take you to show you the places your father lived before. I said, you see me right now? And you travel with me to the nations and you eat with me and president, congressmen and women all across the nation. I said, that is a finished product. But I said, you need to see your father. You need to see where I used to stay. And I said, I said, you, you, you need to see where I grew up from, the communities where I live, from Dondoli, Adwa, to Jejereyiri and to Wapami, and to Tinomsoko at Bolgatanga and Zwarungu. You need to see places where I live and walk. I said, girl, you need to see this dad of yours, where I've come from. I said, when you see me, you are seeing a case breaker, a game changer. You are seeing a world changer. You are seeing somebody that was never meant to make it and to live and to succeed in life, but was determined against all contradictions and art that irrespective of the challenges of my upbringing and irrespective of the pain and the sufferings and irrespective of the triggers and irrespective of all that I suffered I made up my mind that I cannot be stopped I will not dwell on my past I will not dwell on the disappointment of yesterday. I will go through process and I will not jump ahead of time 
I will not jump ahead of anybody. I will stay in the line and I will build, taking it one day at a time. Are you hearing me, somebody? Put your hands together and give him glory. And Jotan became great and mighty because he prepared himself. The difference between King Saul, the first king of Israel, and King David, the second king of Israel, is this. Saul became king overnight. He was anointed king overnight. He didn't go through process. He didn't suffer anything. It was handed to him. He didn't know the value of what he had. David was anointed three times. David went through process. He was anointed the first time before his brethren. The second anointing before Judah. The third anointing before all of Israel. He went through process. So when he became king, he understood the value of what he had. Hear me. Ignorance of purpose results into abuse. When you don't know the value of what you have, you will destroy it. I hear a lot of young ladies come to me and say, Papa, pray for me. I need a husband. And I say, why do you need a husband? I'm growing. I need to make babies. All my siblings are married. I'm married. And I said, all that is not the reason for you to marry. Those are not reasons for you to marry. So, but I'm a woman. I said, women don't marry. The Bible never say, said, you're a woman, so you must marry. The Bible said, he that finds a wife, not he that finds a woman, but a wife. So you must become a wife before you are married. Until you become a wife, you are not qualified to marry. You are only qualified to marry when you have become a wife. For he that finds a wife, not he that finds a woman. I see a lot of young men Come to me and say, Papa, pray for me. I'm believing you. Ask for this year, I will marry. Ask for this year, I must marry. And I said, talk to me. Why do you want to marry? And someone said, Papa, I think I'm in love with this girl. And I said, I said, I said, I said, how do you know? Oh, Papa, I'm telling you. I know it. I know it. I said, it's not enough to know. The Bible said, for this cause, shall a man not a boy a man and i said tell me talk to me talk to me what do you do for a living how much do you have in your savings do you live in your own house or you live in mama's house or daddy's house i said talk to me tell me about your status in life and i tell a lot of them you are not ready to marry you're not a man you're not a man because a lot of the women these days are very, very, very creative and progressive and successful. And if you are not a man, if you are not ready to be a provider, you're going to have a lot of problems when you marry. Because women are not providers, women are helpers. When a woman becomes a provider, we've changed the order of God. And a lot, of, a lot of brothers, a lot of brothers want to marry, but they are not yet men. Because a man is independent. A boy is dependent. A boy depends on mom and dad, but a man is independent. If we don't understand the rules of engagement, we'll run into a lot of problems. If you come to Matthew 25, the 14 to the 13 to the 38 verse, you don't have to tend to it. I, because of time, I will mention some few things. The Bible said that a master called his servants. To one he gave five talents, to another he gave two, and to the other he gave one. And hear me, a lot of people believe that talents are skills and abilities. No. The talent here is money. That was the name of the money that was used in those days. 
Then the Bible said to everyone was given talent according to their several abilities. So that's why you must develop ability or capacity. Because you see, it is your capacity that determines what you can handle. And the master knew them and knew that this guy has ability to handle five. That is all he can handle. He can't handle more than five. This has ability to handle only two. The other has ability to handle one. The reason why you must never be jealous and envious of anybody in this life is this. Whatever you have, whatever you are today, is what your ability can handle. If you improve on your ability, you can have more than you have. So there is no need to be jealous. No need to envy. No need to juju. No need to kill anybody. No need to take the picture and the name to anybody or to any shrine to destroy anybody. Because whatever you have, whatever you are in this life, has to do with your ability to handle what you have. If you are giving more, if the man that was given more than five talents was given ten talents, he would have abused it, mishandled it, because he hadn't developed the ability to handle ten. But when he worked on his ability, improved on his ability, he moved from ten, from five to ten. The one that had two moved from two to more than two. The one that had one set his eyes on the one that had five and the one that had two, and complain. You see, when you complain, and you blame God, and you become jealous and envious of others, you lose sight of what you have, and you end up reducing your creativity to inactivity. And you bury your gift. You bury your talent. You bury what you have, and you lose the opportunities that life offers you. Why? Because you are keeping your eye on what others have. Turn to somebody and say, take your eyes off me. Take your eyes off me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Take your eyes off what I have. Everybody has something. Turn to somebody and say, everybody has something. Everybody. Everybody. Has, it doesn't matter who you are. Everybody is giving something. If you can make use of what you have, you can have more. That's the only reason why we are jealous. Covetous. We envy one another and will go to any extent to character assassinate and destroy reputation and destroy others because we don't know the value of what we have. We don't appreciate what we have. We don't even know that we have something. You have something others don't have. Hear me? I have something you don't have and you have something I don't have. As gifted as anyone may be in life, we are interdependent. God never gave all to one person. We have need one for another. In this life, as long as you live, it doesn't matter how brilliant, intellectual, sophisticated as you might be, you will always need somebody. Turn to somebody and say, everybody, everybody. needs somebody. somebody. And hear me, we are better together than alone. Always together, better together than when we're alone. The Bible said one shall put a thousand to flight and two shall put ten thousand to flight. So, if one puts a thousand to flight, then according to mathematics or arithmetic, if you add one to one is what? Two. But God said, if I find, if I find agreement and synergy, instead of addition, I will give you multiplication. Hallelujah. Instead of two, I'll give you ten thousand. Come on, somebody, put your hands together. We are better together than alone. Don't be a loner. What kills Samson? Hear me. Samson, Samson, what kills Samson was not his weakness. Samson was not weak. It was his strength that killed him. It was his gift that killed him. The young man was so strong, was so powerful that he needed nobody. When you are so strong, so gifted, so powerful, so skillful you can be very dangerous because you come to a place where you don't see your need of anybody you feel like i have it all i know it all and when you have it all and know it all you become a loner you are isolated from others and isolation leads to elimination so don't be isolated no matter how strong you are learn 
to work with others. Learn to work with others. Go through the process. The Bible said in Matthew 22, 14, he said, many are called, only few are chosen. The few that are chosen are those that went through process. Are those that prepared themselves for what the future holds. There's a great future ahead of every one of you. But you got to prepare. You have to go through process. You must pay the price for what the future holds for you. I look forward. I'm very, very optimistic about the future of every one of you. And I, I'm waiting to see you on national television, on social media, breaking the rules, breaking the curse, being a game changer, a curse breaker, being distinguished from others. I want to see you at the top where I can sit down and tell my grandchildren and my great-grandchildren, I know that young man, I know that lady. I saw them when they were in university. I look forward to seeing the great things that the future holds for you. Don't abort your future by taking a shortcut. Don't try to be like others. Whatever you have, use what you have. And if you, if you, if you use what you have, you improve what you have, you better your skill, you can have more. The man that had five had more than five. The man that had two had more than two. The one that had one buried his own. Why? He was looking at others. Stop looking at others. Take your eyes off what others have. Look at what you have. Focus on it. Improve on what you have. And don't settle for good. I was telling my wife the other day, I said good is not enough for me anymore. I need better. And I said to her, I said, babe, I said, babe, hear me. Oh, why are you, why are you shouting? You like babe, eh? Okay, God will give you a babe. He'll give you your own babe. Hallelujah. I said, babe, I have come to the conclusion that the enemy of better is good. And I'm determined not to settle for good anymore. And the problem with every marriage, eh? and the marriage is it's difficult to find a good man and a good woman. But finding a good man and a good woman is not enough for marriage. You got to find the right person for you. Not the good person, but the right person. And the enemy of the right and better is good. Because you can settle for what is good, but what is good doesn't mean that it's right for you. And that is the problem we have. We settle for good and miss right. And miss better. I pray for you. As you hear the sound of my voice, please stand on your feet. My time is up. That you go for better. That you won't settle for good. You go for better. I have learned as I engage people in life, I hear them, I read their CVs, I engage them. I'll tell my wife, I said, Babe, this is good, but I need better. I need better. Because you can have good people and you have to supervise them to deliver. But better doesn't need supervision. You cannot be better in life nor fulfill purpose in life unless you are connected with your creator. Jesus said you can do nothing without me. Any plant that is uprooted from the soil will die. When a branch is cut off a tree, it dies. But as long as you are connected to the vine, you bear fruit. We can do nothing without our Creator. Unless we are connected to the Savior, we labor in vain. It doesn't matter how educated we become in life. You can be very educated and brilliant and still not know why you came and who you are and still miss it. I've seen so many educated people very, very intelligent, smart, but don't know their purpose and who they are. They wander in life and they die in disappointment because they never realize why they were born and why they came. I want to pray for you every year, by every eye closed. If you are here, you say, preacher, could you please pray for me? Yes. I want to be reconnected and united with my Savior. And I want to know who I am, why I came, and why I'm here. I don't want to miss my purpose. If you don't know that, 
You can become the president of the nations of the world and still die a prophet and a disappointment if you don't know why you are here and why you came. It is your connection with your God and your Savior that will enlighten you and give you the revelation and the ability to discover your purpose and your mission. I am here preaching to you because I realized many years ago that this was the reason for which I was born. And so let us pray. If you are here, you say, preacher, pray for me. Pray with me. I don't want to take life for granted. I don't want to die prematurely. I don't want to be a disappointment. I want to fulfill my purpose. I don't want to spend time doing things that I was never born to do and to be. Only to waste 10, 20 years of my life before I discover the main reason for which I was born and came. You don't have time. Time is of the essence. You don't have time to waste. Today, as you hear the sound of my voice, the Bible said, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. You want to live here with understanding and with purpose. That I am somebody. I am uncommon. I am not ordinary. I'm not like anyone else. With every head by me, I close. If you want me to pray with you, for your name to be written in the book of life, in the book of Revelation, the 20th chapter, the Bible said, and the books were open, and another book was open. And anyone whose name was not found in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Hell was not made for us, it was made for the devil and his angels. But those who reject Jesus, you will not go to hell because you sin, you only go to hell because you didn't accept the Savior, you rejected him. Every eye closed, every head bow. If you want your name written in the book of life, just lift up your right hand. Let me pray with you right now before I'm seated. Lift up your right hand. Say, Papa, pray with me. I want my name written in the book of life. I don't want my name out of the book of life. If your hand is lifted up, wherever you are right now, make your way to the front and come to me. Let me pray with you. Come. Right now, I declare by the blood of the covenant. Anyone here appointed to die in 2024, be loose in the name of Jesus. We annul every appointment with death by land, air, and water. Be released, be rescued, be delivered in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for deliverance, for deliverance. And every one of you that have come forward, anyone else, please lift up your right arm. Everybody, everybody, lift up your right arm. Say, Heavenly Father, I realize that in sin did my mother conceive me. That I was born a sinner. And I recognize today that only Jesus can save. Therefore, Lord Jesus, I acknowledge you today before heaven and earth. Before heaven and hell, I acknowledge you as my Lord and Savior. Write my name in the book of life. Cleanse me with your blood. Wash me. Forgive me. In the name of Jesus. From the original sin. Forgive me of the sins of my bloodline. Forgive me of self-committed sins. As I acknowledge you today as my Lord and Savior. Write my name in the book of life. Help me to discover my purpose, why I came, why I'm here, why I was born. Help me not to waste my time on anything outside of my purpose. Let me find purpose. Let me discover the reason for my being and empower me to fulfill your original intent, your reason for my life, for which life was given unto me. Help me, Lord. I pray in the name of Jesus not to go back to where I have come from. Help me not to be ashamed of you. Help me not to be a man pleaser. Help me not to seek to be in the good in the good books of others, but to be in your good books. In the name of Jesus, lift up your hands as I pray. Heavenly Father, I pray for every one of these precious sons and daughters of yours that you will mark them with the blood of the Lamb. 
Seal them with the Holy Spirit. Rescue them. Deliver and save. Make known, reveal to each one of them the reason for their being. Make known to them your original intent. I pray that not one among them will miss it. That they will find the reason for their being and fulfill it. And now I command, I command divine exemptions for every one of them. Exemptions from the consequence of the iniquity of their fathers and of their mothers. Exemption from the consequence of any curse and demonic covenant and altar in their background. Let them be exempted in the name of Jesus from that consequence. And let them escape the snare. The snare. The snare of the curse. The snare of that altar. The snare. The snare of that covenant. Of the adversary in their background. And I pray that each one of them will become curse breakers. Game changers. World changers. And that you will distinguish. You will cause them to be distinguished from others and even their brethren. Like you did for Joseph and Daniel and, and, and David and so many others. And even for me, Father. Remember them, I pray, for good. Help them to study the scriptures. Help them to commit to know you. To walk with you and not to be ashamed of you to take a stand for you because you stand for those who stand for you you honor those who honor you may they take a stand for you that you may stand up for them may they honor you that you may honor them i pray for them i command your blessings i command your protection over every one of them i rebuke nightmare yeah. any peace that contends with them in their sleep and in their dream. Let that peace be terminated. We block any openings the enemy has, any occasion and advantage and legal grounds that the enemy uses to afflict them, to oppress them. Let it be annulled by the blood of Jesus. Annulled! Annulled in the name of Jesus. Give them a sound mind. Give them a sound mind. Let the nightmares come to an end. In the name of Jesus, let the contention cease. Cause them to have your peace by all means. Give them peace by all means. Deliver them by all means. Distinguish them from others. Let them have an experience in Jesus' name.